Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining me today. Oh, yeah, luckily I got the house to myself today, so it's a good day for uh, making a video. Kiddo went to the uh, transmitter site with his dad, so yeah, they're having to get a um, air conditioner installed in the uh, transmitter so it doesn't overheat because they get very hot <laughs> and can overheat very easily and then, yeah, throw in summer weather with that and makes it even worse because um, basically the uh, buildings that they're in, the transmitters are in, are like shacks with almost no insulation. So, yeah. Yeah, and they have to watch it too because mice get in there. And... Uh, Sometimes they climb inside because it's warm and get zapped and short out the machine. So, yeah. My husband had more than once he had to go see what was wrong with the transmitter and it was mice. Poor things. Hopefully that means they didn't see it coming. At least... Yeah, and I'm, this is probably the last diagonal I'm going to do before I move my frame again. Yay! Yeah, making progress. Ooh, pardon me. Mm. Oh, I went for a walk, but it doesn't seem to have really woken me up that much. Ooh. Then gave kiddo a haircut. Yeah, he has super thick hair like his dad, so especially in the summer, I like to keep it short, so it's a little cooler for him. I actually had really thick hair when I was a kid and a teenager, but um, it never really recovered after having a baby. I mean, it, most of it grew back because you know how it uh, falls out a lot afterwards but it never quite recovered so and then I'm on a medication that gives me brittle nails and hair so yeah I'm prone to breakage so it's never quite what it was I so said I guess it's a good thing I started off with thick hair to begin with so I saw a meme that had, you know, hair during pregnancy and it shows like Jasmine from the animated um, um, Aladdin, right, with her luxurious locks. And then afterward, and then it says afterwards and it was like um, Gollum <laughs> with this, you know, a few little strings of hair. It's like, yeah, it's not quite that bad, but it sure felt like it. My goodness, that was weird. The way this end is coming up. It's hard to see exactly which spot it comes from. There we go. That's why I trimmed it super short. Okay. Oh, pardon me. Okay, these I'm all going to put aside for later. Oh, there was a needle on one of them. I'm going to find it before I accidentally stab myself with it because that's no fun. Yeah, my feet are usually safe because I wear slippers, but that was on the uh, seat of the couch, so my behind does not have any such uh, protection. Really don't want to get stuck. I actually had my knitting on the couch and sat on it once. And I guess I was lucky that um, the circular needle bent instead of poking a hole in me. 
but oh, I wasn't very happy because it was one of the really expensive like German Addy Turbo circulars and they're like, you know, 30 bucks for a set. So yeah, I wasn't very happy. I found if I put the bent one in my left hand, since I'm right-handed, so I'm knitting from left to right, uh, then it wasn't so bad. I was able to uh, keep using it. So I could bent it back somewhat, but there was only so much I could do. Yeah, I really like them, but then the problem is too, the, um, the shipping is quite expensive. In Canada, that's almost always the case. A lot of times the shipping costs more than the item itself, which is a bit frustrating. Or if you're willing to, you know, order from somewhere that has really cheap shipping, like on eBay, then you have to wait like six weeks for it to arrive. And who's got the patience for that anymore? <laughs> You know, we're not back in the days of mail order catalogs now. We order stuff online, we expect to get it a lot quicker than that. Well, I imagine, too, with gas prices, what they are, shipping is only going to get higher, unfortunately. Yeah, like we were thinking of going to visit relatives back in another province, but, you know, now that things are opening up a bit again, but, uh, yeah, we uh, did the math, and with the gas, it's just too much. Like, never mind counting, you know, food and possibly hotels and stuff. Yeah, it's... Uh, Cha-ching. Because, yeah, it's kind of nice. Um, We're allowed to use my husband's company vehicle to travel, but, I mean, if it's for personal, then we've got to pay the gas. So, yeah. I, I do kind of like that because uh, less wear and tear on my vehicle. And also the fact that um, I get less motion sick on long car rides in the truck because it's bigger. Yeah. I'm unfortunately very prone to that. Oh, I tried this, um, they had this, uh, impaired driving thing demonstration at, uh, the Honda dealership about a week ago, and they gave you these glasses to si simulate what it, uh, feel it's like to be impaired. Oh, those almost made me ill. It had, everything was distorted, and so it was kind of hard to see how far away from things you were and such, and yeah because it was a vehicle wasn't used to it was like well where's the starter in us and uh the guy said oh well your mom i guess she wouldn't drive impaired because she would not even be able to find the starter <laughs> but yeah so they had um they had those goggles so they went over my glasses to see what simulate what driving impaired is like and that was cool man motion sick and then they tried distracted driving so they it was obviously on a closed little course in their parking lot not on the street because that would be you know <laughs> unethical um but uh they um like they had my son was with me so they're like wait text your mom okay try to text her back you know and my son's old enough he has a learner so he tried it too and they're like okay well um look up what the weather's going to be like tomorrow okay what about you know the day after and stuff and uh yeah they asked beforehand do you think um impaired driving or distracted driving is worse and actually the distracted driving was harder than the impaired driving i was surprised and they said yeah thankfully rates of um impaired driving has gone down you know there's been years and years of uh education campaigns and such that people aren't doing it anymore but uh distracted driving is uh unfortunately on the rise yeah so well, I told them I put my phone on do not disturb when I'm going driving. They said, oh, that's a good, good idea. Because, yeah. That way I'm not even tempted to look at it. If a text comes through, I won't know. Yeah, And I have it set up so that um, 
like my husband and son can still phone through if there's an emergency, at which case I would pull over to talk to them. But uh, yeah, otherwise it's on do not disturb. So I'm not distracted by, you know, it dinging and emails and stuff coming through. Cause yeah, I mean, you are operating heavy machinery. You know, they said it's funny when people say operate heavy machinery, they mean cars, but I always think like excavator or something. <laughs> Yeah, they had a bunch of like hockey pucks on the ground to mark the uh, the course and it went around a couple of loops. So you started and it sort of went in an S shape. You went here and then you went here and then you went back and then you went back to the beginning and yeah. So yeah, it was kind of interesting to try. Yeah, and here in my uh, province, they have um, very very stiff penalties for um, distracted driving. First one's like a seven hundred dollar. Next one's like almost fifteen hundred bucks, and they impound your car for a, a week. And uh, and of course, you get demerits on your license. And the third offense, I think you may even lose your license for a period of time, as well as a car being impounded pardon me so uh yeah it's pretty severe but uh we all want to be safe on the road right so because i said one of the problems is everybody thinks they're uh above average for um for multitasking you think you're better at it than you are Okay. Yeah, so we're thinking for our holidays this year, we'll, uh, we're going to go to a city that's just, you know, an hour's drive away. They have a, a train museum, which my son will absolutely love. Yeah, he just, he loves trains and train signals. He builds them out of a uh, Lego and such. And yeah, it's quite uh, impressive actually. He's got all the, the jointed uh, arms and stuff. And um, he uses the little Lego, um, they're actually little garbage can lids that look like little dishes. Um, he uses those as the signal lights, puts little red, um, sort of the little red um, button one it looks like, knob or whatever they call it, and um, in the middle, and it totally looks like the train tracks where he got the little X-shaped pieces and does that. So yeah, I had actually special order some for him, and he had to get um, some ladders so he could use it for the, you know, the little parts that extend over the the freeway. Yeah, he's quite, uh, he's quite imaginative. Somebody said maybe he'll be like a city planner or something. <laughs> Ooh. or he uh he likes to build um with well, a lego and he says he crash tests it but he also likes to build little uh models out of um kleenex boxes because they're the right they're the right size an approximate shape and then i said you know it seems a shame to squash it when you put so much work in it but hey <laughs> keeps him happy so yeah i said he's definitely got better spatial perception than i do that's for sure <laughs> Yeah, he even makes little um, windows for them with tape and um, cling wrap and stuff, saran wrap. So yeah, it's pretty cool. He had for a while, he had a little toy shopping cart when he was really little that he pretended was a car. And um, I had a little belt from his pants that he said was the seat belt. So he put his uh, stuffed animals in and then he built a top for it once with uh, cereal boxes made windows with the box tape and gave it little mirrors and everything. Yeah, it was pretty darn cute. His dad helped him a bit with that one. 
because he was, uh, yeah, he was like seven or something at that age. So yeah, it's pretty cute. Okay, a little bit of confetti here, but not too much. Ooh, oh, pardon me. Yeah, my husband was a little worried our guinea pig. He thought maybe she didn't seem to be eating, but I think maybe she's, um, her vision is going. Because, um, oh, what have I done? Something's not right here. Okay. Yeah, I am somewhat, that's that one. Oh, oh, did I park this wrong? I must have. Hang on a minute. Let's see what I've done here. Under 760. 10. It says I have one parked, but I don't seem to. Oh! Yeah, I parked something totally wrong. Ah, that's what I did. I see that. I have the wrong color. Okay, what I actually did here was I did this stitch, and then I parked it in the wrong place thinking it was the one that was a little lower. No problem, we can fix that. Yeah, like I said, I'm not perfect. So what I did was I did that and I parked that there. This one, I actually didn't do. But it is parked in the correct spot, so we can fix that now. It's this one. Why? that's really uneven. Try that again. Here we are. Yeah, there we go. It is fixed now. Okay. Oh, told you I was tired. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, let's see if there's any, there's nothing close by. No. Not the one time. I'm hoping for a tiny little scrap piece. Not got any. Got to start a whole brand new bit. Oh, well. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Me. Ugh, my husband was snoring this morning, so woke me up. It was a little closer to me than I thought, so when I went to sort of nudge him with my elbow, I hit him a little harder than I meant to. Whoops. <laughs> he always tells me to poke him and he'll turn over and stop snoring because he snores on his back so yeah apparently my great grandpa snored really bad oh dear i have got a knot i knew that didn't feel right oh my gosh come on don't be a pain would you there we go. Okay. All right, so anyway, my um, my great-grandpa apparently was a very loud snorer, so my um, great-grandma sewed a great big button on the back of his pajamas so that he couldn't comfortably lie on his back. So if he rolled to his back, it would poke him and it'd be uncomfortable enough that he would roll onto his other side so that he didn't wake her up. Yeah, because apparently he was one of those, like, it doesn't matter if you sleep in a separate room from him. He snores so loudly, you'd hear it through the walls. So that was their solution. Mm. My grandpa, his son, right? Great grandpa's son. My grandpa was a very loud snorer. He would make the snoring sound and then make it almost sound like a moo sound. 
in between. I remember we went camping with my grandparents and my sister and I caught each other's eye, just almost burst out laughing. We were trying not to wake anyone else. It's like, man, how does my grandma sleep next to that? It's not like she had, you know, hearing issues or anything. So she must just be a sound sleeper. Some people are like that. And my dad said he went to a boarding school for the last couple of years. And he said, yeah, there was one guy who, like, they were woken up by basically these um, fire alarm bells. So really loud and piercing. That was their wake up call and he said he'd still have to go over to the guy and put his hands on his chest and like you know bounce him up and down like half a dozen times before he would start waking up yeah like uh, later on his wife said yeah he would sleep through a bloody hurricane <laughs> oh it's like what is that like man i wake up from everything mm. But yeah, anyway, I was just saying a while back about our guinea pig. He was worried she wasn't eating, but I think she didn't see the food he put in because I sort of went and, you know, to see how she was doing. And I moved it sort of closer to her whiskers. And when she felt it, then she started eating it with her normal uh, gusto. So, yeah, I think it could be her eyesight is not what it used to be. Because I've noticed sometimes when I'm giving her a treat, she doesn't really seem to, to notice it till I tap it against the side of her cage or or touch it against her face. So yeah, I think her vision's going. But yeah, like I said, she's an she's an older girl, so sometimes they're just oblivious too. My um sister in law, she loves animals and she had guinea pigs and she said, Yeah, she had one who was like you'd sometimes be pushing the carrot like right into his mouth and he would just sort of stand there like, huh, not even notice even though he loves carrots, so, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, he was um the runt of the litter at, um, she worked at one of the pet stores, and nobody wanted him, and so, being a, you know, a softy, she, uh, she took him home, and uh, hand-fed him and everything, this, like, vegetables, but also this uh, special food mix, it's, like, called small animal rescue or something like that which is to help them gain weight quickly and uh she spoon fed him with that and he uh yeah he recovered and actually you would never know he was the, he was a runt because he's just lovely thick glossy fur and he's little fat rolls when he climbs up on the side of the cage he's he's so healthy now she thought maybe he was what they call the skinny pig which is the ones that don't have hair um because his hair was, or a werewolf skinny, they call them, where they have like just very patchy, wiry fur. But it turns out, no, it was just the poor thing was bitten by his siblings and stuff and not able to get enough food. And so his fur wasn't growing in nicely. And once she took over his care, he just blossomed. And yeah, he's a gorgeous, glossy fur. You would never know that he was struggling at the beginning. Yeah, she named him Maximus. <laughs> like a mighty gladiator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and she said he was probably taken from his mother too young too because um we put her with him with our our uh, girl piggy when he was still really little and he kept trying to go drink nurse off her so she said yeah if he still had that nursing instinct then yeah he was probably separated too soon poor thing yeah and then 
Miss Buster kept running away. It's like, I don't have any milk. I'm not your mama. Leave me alone. Okay, seven ninety three. Here's the bottom of that sort of shrub-like tree. Tall one. Not sure what you call those. <laughs> oh man, I remember. Um, yeah, they're like the ones that kind of people use for fences. Yeah. Anyway, I remember we were at somebody's place and we were uh, playing a game where they had a bit, of, they had an acreage, so we would... Um, you had to hide and they had to try and find us and, you know, they'd say boom, boom, like you were shot and then you had to fall down. And anyway, me and my sister had both, were both hiding in the hedge right next to each other. And they said that. And so both of us fell out thinking it was us. So what at the end, the girl said, oh, I only, you know, got one of you. I said, oh, okay. So I stood up as if I was going to, you know, stand back up and hide again, <laughs> even though they know exactly where I am. <laughs> oh, made everybody laugh. Ugh. Yeah, that actually was for a, uh, a music camp we had one year. Yeah, and it rained, man. And it was one of those, um, we had a, it was a stormy weekend and it was one of those, um, where the rain would come and it would soak you through to the skin within seconds because it would be like no rain and then all of a sudden just buckets, right? So, yeah. And I remember they, there was a thunderstorm and we were trying to figure out how far away the thunder was, you know, with the counting, the time between the the, thun, the lightning and the thunder. The problem was there were so many flashes of uh, lightning, you couldn't tell which rumble was connected to which flash. So all we knew is that it was getting close. And then, yeah, sky would open up and everybody got drenched right through. Yeah, and we were camping on their ground, so that made for fun. <laughs> Being totally soaked to the skin, and you're in a ruddy tent. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not a camping person. Yeah, my husband likes it, son likes it, but uh, it's definitely not my thing. Yeah, it kind of sucked because um, the last time that we did go, we were, um, well, we met my um, my husband's parents in Jasper and uh, there was a fire ban on and it rained the whole weekend and yet there's still no fire was allowed. It's like, well, could we really start a forest fire even if we tried to? Because everything was soaking, but uh, yeah, they didn't lift the fire ban while we were there. And my poor mother-in-law, you know, it, it would uh, rain and then, the sun would come out again, so she would hang things out to dry. And, like, as soon as she got them hung out to dry again, it would rain again and soak everything. <laughs> and actually, um, my husband's brother and his family, wife and kids, they came to, uh, so they got, like, two um, 
camping spaces next to each other. And theirs was kind of down a hill and in a little bit of a, a gully. And uh, after that first night, it got their tent basically filled with water. And they had four kids with them, right? One of them a nursing baby and it was just miserable. And they, yeah, they ended up leaving early because, yeah, that's no fun. I'm just thinking, you're braver than me to take a nursing baby with you to camping. That's, uh, yeah, they got a lot of kids. Yeah, although their very oldest is grown now, out of the house. Seems hard to believe how fast the time goes, because I remember holding her when she was brand new. And now she's an adult. Yeah, it just flies by. I mean, yeah, my own is going to be an adult and just like legally an adult in like three years. Holy mackerel. Okay, good. We'll be finishing off quite a few threads so that will free up some needles. Yeah, towards the bottom of the diagonal, it's the bottom edge of the fountain, or the side, I mean, of the fountain, so everything's going in the opposite direction of the diagonal. This stuff is kind of going with it, so it goes a little faster. There's a little, there's a few, fewer color changes. Oh, let's see if this will cover all the stitches that I've highlighted. Probably not. Yeah, I'll have to start a new one. These three is all I'm going to get out of this part thread, so. Yeah, that's all really light yellow there, so instead of pin stitching it, I'm going to draw it along the back just to be sure we won't get any show through. Okay.
felt like there might have been a snarl, but there wasn't, so... Unthreaded it by accident. Ah, uh, that happens sometimes when you're trying to squeak every last bit of out of that thread. <laughs> Now this color is lighter, so I feel safe to pin stitch it. Even amongst all this, where it's going to be light yellow. that for the next diagonal. All this stuff sort of right here, right in sort of this area. 
might just leave that okay with the next one sometimes I decide to do that That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I just don't feel like pulling on a new thread. <laughs> and attaching it. I'd rather work with the attached ones I already have. That goes faster. sounded wrong. It just sounded weird, but it's okay. It's all smooth on the back, so we're good. Always want to catch those snarls right away when we can. Much easier to fix. After you've stitched around them, they can get caught on other threads, and then they can become almost impossible to remove. Guess how I know. strands were threaded but not evenly <laughs> smooth those out there now they're even
Okay. And further down we go. Sweet. Sometimes I like to work without highlighting a specific color and I don't have to switch back and forth so much. Yeah, when it's a really simple area. Sometimes I do that. Oh, oh dear me. Go back to highlighting now. All right, let's see how long this piece is. Oh, it's pretty, pretty long. Okay. Forty-eight. <laughs> this looks 
Still got a ways to go till I reach the pillars on the far right. I think a couple of shifts of the uh, of the frame before we get there. So that's going to be a while. Probably another month at least. We shall see. Looks like this might be one of the places where I have more threads than stitches. Uh, that's okay. That happens sometimes. Nope. Oh. Then we just end off one and save the pieces until later. Okay. number three thread away so I won't bother pulling it out again. Again, it's kind of borderline. It's really in the next diagonal, but it's right next to the edge, so sometimes I go past it. Sometimes I stop before it. Depends on my mood and the colors and how long my threads are and lots of things. My goodness, again.
Okay. Not quite a lot of this color here. I see what I'm gonna do. Let's see how long the piece that is parked here is, which is this one here. Okay, so not too terribly long, but not too short either. So, yeah. I was trying to figure out what I want to do to avoid closing in that number nine symbol, but now I know what I'm gonna do. And also avoid having long carries along the back. those and I park that there. Then I'm going to do this one. All right. This one is long enough to carry and park. Then what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to do, oh my goodness, that's very uneven. So I'm going to do these four, three, and then one. And then these two here, so that way I didn't close anything in or do it out of order. And then park right there. Yeah, that works out nicely. Okay, I think we'll be ready to wrap this up soon. Oh, goodness me, again, my gosh. been a yawning kind of day.
There? Nope. Something doesn't look right. Nope. There. It was against a grid line, but the wrong one. Yeah. These threads around it were not matching, so. And I knew I had done something incorrect. All right, I think I'm going to take a break there. Maybe go for a bit of a walk around the block and wake myself up since I keep yawning. So um, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone, bye.